Hi everyone and welcome to the Melbourne Traditionalist Podcast, episode 81. My name is Mark Moncrief and I'm here today with Mr. Mark Richardson from Oz Conservative. How are you? I'm well, thanks for having me, Mark. Good to be back. No, it's a, always a pleasure to have you on. And um, we're going to talk today about the role of women in a traditional society and the role of men in a traditional society. And uh, I think we agreed at the start that you would lead off. Okay. So we'll start off with women. Yep. Um, okay, so it's obviously a big topic. Uh, I guess... Yeah, it, it is. And we, we're obviously not going to cover everything, not no. every, every little nuance. Uh, I'm going to start in a really odd way. So I was on Twitter again this morning. Yes. And uh, somebody, a, a trad Catholic woman, had done a tweet, which was her in a beautiful, very traditional looking dress. And I remembered her Twitter page. I went and had a look and it was very impressive, really. It, it, it was her... Uh, not just showing her in, in traditional fashion, but um, also kind of very uh, domestic design, making the home beautiful, mm-hmm. um, cooking really nice looking food, uh, and showing some revulsion for some of the androgyny of modern society. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what, what struck me about it is it was a very powerful kind of assertion of what used to be called the eternal feminine. Um, and I, I guess it struck me that to, to really counteract what modern liberal society offers, uh, you can't just have a, um, a censorious thing, oh, you know, this is decadent and so on, which as true as that might be, you need something... I, I agree very much with that. ...as powerful to counteract it and I thought this was really powerful if you're a man with a pulse <laughs> looking looking at this page it, 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 it was a you you were likely to have a very strong and positive reaction to it I think because uh, it's about beauty and about something very creative uh, and unique about the whole feminine sense of, 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 of what of contribution to to human society but but in a very direct way yep um and so i started with that because instead of saying well here's a rule for for women in trade society and here's this rule and here's that rule to to me the the important thing really is restoring uh that idea of well what what is it that's remarkable and what and, 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 and impressive in what women can offer to a society and to human life, really. Um, and there's a lot you could say, of course, but I, I thought that this really strongly demonstrated what we've lost and what we could try and retrieve, um, and that would appeal certainly to men, but but I would expect too to to a lot of women. Who, who do have a sense of, you know, what is beautiful in a very tactile sense within a domestic setting and, you know, making the home a, a beautiful, comfortable place. Um, and so I think that's part of it. I'll, I'll just make add one further point onto this because I'm not sure how much you agree with it, to be honest. I, I'm not 100% against women having a role outside the home either. Um, no, no, no. I, the, the lockdowns have really influenced me and I think an hour outside the home a day is quite satisfactory. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah, a joke, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I was getting at is... Um, so... You're, I, you're I, talking I think, about work. Yeah, I am. I'm talking about work. I think the male provider role has to be protected. We'll get onto that in the second part of this discussion. So I don't want any that to be undermined in a trad society and I think the timing of this really matters that you don't want women in their late teens and 20s to be drawn away from 
family formation and having children. But, you know, if, if a woman wants to do some work outside the home at some point in her life, that doesn't shock me or, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that can be incorporated in, in at least to some degree within a trade society. Um, yep. What's your opinion on that? Because I think that that's an interesting one. Do you? Well, actually, a, a few years ago, I came across a extinct blog and he'd actually asked... Why didn't feminists do it this way? Yeah. And basically he said, what feminists say is that a woman uh, is in her most fertile period, her most attractive period, the, the period where she should be devoting her time to finding a husband and to settling down, to having children. And instead, she's encouraged to have an education and to, um, to get a job. And that that becomes the focus Mm. of her life. And he asked the question, well, why didn't feminists say, hey, after you're married and after you've had your children, then you go to university and get your job? Yeah. And uh, um, the reason, I think, is that by that stage of life, most women are saying, well, no, I don't want to do that. I'm actually happy with what I've got. Yeah. Um, So they have to catch them young. But actually... If a woman is um, wanted to do that, wanted to, you know, was so determined to have a career, then why can't she have it in her late thirties and early forties? Yeah. And, and you know, there's twenty five years in which to have a career. That's that's enough time to have a career. Yeah. Um, but secondly, I think that there is a difference between need and want, and some women need to work. There's no, there's no other option, right? They, they, you know, their their husband doesn't make enough money. They have to work. I don't have an object, objection to that, because you need to live. But I do have an objection to want, because so much of the want is about taking away men's prestige and competing against men. And many women say, well. You know, if they're not if they're not good enough to be able to compete against me, well, you know, they're who cares, right? But of course, what they're doing is they're really destroying another woman's possibilities. Yeah, they're destroying her options. They're not just destroying the man's, which they absolutely are, um, and that stops family formation. Yeah. So that I'm very much against. No, you make the point. Well, I mean, I again, I. <laughs> I remember reading a comment from a woman who said that she was a feminist and she wanted equality between men and women. But when it came to dating men, she she had to have a man who was in a good financial position. Yeah. And somebody asked her, well, what? how do you define that? And she said, he has to make twice of the money that I make. Twice. And I pointed out the, the, the illogic of this, that how can you have men and women earning the same? amount of money yeah but then you'll only date men who make twice that's not viable on a, on a society-wide level um, and yeah this is another thing of course I, I mean uh, we're not the first people to notice this that um, it, it, it d- does impact on family formation in a whole series of ways when women are propelled in their early 20s in, into high level professions but at the same time, they want to marry up or meet men who, you know, have an equivalent or higher degree of education and career. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the logical answer is is for women. To, I mean, it, it's it is the logical thing, isn't it? That that in their teens and twenties, if women focus on that phase of their life, having kids, and fa- and getting married and having kids, uh, you, you get rid of that that problem of, of, of then how do you marry up um, because they, they can marry up they're, they're, there's no issue then and there's the thing is that the vast majority of women want to marry up yep. they want to look up to a man in every sense yeah and uh, I think that you know we've as a society we've been saying to women oh you're not allowed to have that those feelings you're not allowed to to desire the things that you actually desire 
and, and actually men have those same pressures. Men are told, oh, you know, it doesn't matter what a woman looks like, you should just accept it. And for a man, that's, that's nonsense. Um, you know, the um, body positive movement, which really says, hey, you can be as fat as you want, as unfit as you want, and there's no problem. But actually for, for men, particularly young men, that is a problem. Yeah. And so both men and women are being put under these pressures and, uh, you know, what they really want, is they're being told, no, no, you're yeah. not allowed to have those things. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and here you raise another interesting point. I mean, when, when, when you look at women in modern society, <laughs> You know, you get, how can I put this, there's, there's a certain level of coarseness and crudeness. Uh, you have the mm-hmm. tattoos, you have the drinking, you have the promiscuity and so on. Now, I think in a trad society, there's such a shift here uh, because um, where, where all that comes from, of course, is this idea that, you know, we should be allowed to make whatever choice we want to and without being judged and the rest of it and it's all just done at an individual level it's just my individual wants and so on whereas in a trad society if you're concerned not just for yourself but about the society overall and if you do think that there are given I don't know standards to live up to yes you start to have a different attitude to all of that so I would hope in a trad society that it would become a bit classier now yeah. I'm reminded of a uh, the part of the poem that you read out on episode 73 when we we're talking about the national anthem um, by George Essex Evans called Australia and this is only one line from it and call wild license liberty yeah and really that's what you're saying that's where we are now we're, we're told that we're free but really what we have is license and and license means doing whatever you want even if it's bad yeah including for you well, that's right and i mean i i would hope that we would return instead to an idea of um i don't know there used to be an idea of perfection of essence for one mm-hmm. thing, that we, we have a masculine essence or a feminine essence if we're, if we're, if we're a woman, yep. and that you can embody those essences. I mean, nobody does it perfectly, but either better or worse. Um, and so that's part of what you strive as. Uh, and so for women, it would be it would be trying to embody uh, a kind of a standard of feminine beauty and dignity and nobility. Um, and again, you go back to that sense in traditional Western culture that uh, of the distinction between more noble and more base forms of human behaviour. I mean, liberalism would deny that you can make that distinction, but, but mm. we always did in the past. Um, and, and we absolutely do as traditionalists. Yeah. So you would hope that a girl raised within that kind of culture, um, you know, would, would, would end up with a, with a classier attitude um, toward her own womanhood. Yeah. Really. Uh, which leads me on to one further point. Sorry to hold the mic again, but <laughs> it just... Um, so one of the things that probably annoys me most about modern womanhood is the way that Western women, their formation is to see men as an enemy class, if you like, or an, or an oppositional yep. class. Yep. And... It drives me mad with, I mean, I, I work with women who have been through all this uh, to university level, and so it comes out really strongly in them. And uh, they, they really seriously see men as, as something to be deconstructed almost, that, 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 that the men are the, the, the evil force in human history and have always been oppositional, the opponents of women. and. Uh, it, it's really disruptive in terms of male-female relationships. How could it be anything but? Yeah. And again, it was not all that long ago that there was a completely different attitude, which was uh, a sense of our men and our women. Yes. If you were part of a national community, you would speak quite proudly 
or fondly of the women of your, if you're a man, of the women of your own nation and, and vice versa. And there's heaps of examples of that. You only have to open up a book written before probably the 70s yeah, or something yeah. like that to, 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 to find that. Yeah. And I remember growing up um, seeing this on television, movies and not, and from, you know, the 50s and 60s where this idea of our women or our men was openly ridiculed. Okay. And um, I, I agree with you, people said it. And I read it and I heard it, even in real life. But on the media, yeah, it was it was a different story. They were pushing a different line. You know, it was very uncool to to be like that. Yeah. You know, uh, the same argument as immigrate immigrants take jobs. You know, oh, that's that's racist. You're not allowed to say that. Yeah. You know, and that 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 was that's very early on that this type of nonsense was being talked about. Yeah, so they had to stomp on that impulse, if yeah. you like, um, which they did quite successfully. Um, so anyway, I think in a trade community, uh, you'd really want to go back to that sense of, of a common good, not, not, not just a fondness for that, for, or not just an identif- positive identification with the, 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 the opposite sex of your own community. Um, but even more than that, and here's my next point, I guess, the idea of the that the, the, in, in modern liberal society where we're taught that we we develop solo it's mm-hmm. us as individuals yeah yeah we're all individuals uh, and that's how we develop which is a lie I think. absolutely um, and particularly when it comes to the male female question because if, if, if the women of your community are corrupted that affects you and it affects your development and mm-hmm. it makes it much harder to develop as a, then as a man um, so our, and, 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 and the same happens with women, that if the men of a community aren't really doing what they should do as men, that's going to make it harder to develop along feminine lines. And, and we have all seen that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and sometimes you'll hear women complain about that, yeah. in fact. Yeah. Um, how am I supposed to properly be feminine if, if the men aren't doing X and, and so on? And so in that sense... I, th- I would hope in a, in a trad community that we would return to a sense of, of a common good, which means that my good as an individual is really uh, interlinked with what happens within the culture generally. Um, and in this case, to women, that if, you know, if, 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 if I have a, the option of marrying a, a, a woman who embodies the best of womanhood, that's going to be very good for me for my development as, as a man yep. um, and in my role in society um, which we don't really get so much in, in modern society so you know I, I would hope that that would make a big difference yeah well I I've agreed with most of what you've you've said and there's yep. nothing that I would really massively disagree with um, I, I I do think that that work outside the home has to be restricted i don't want to be too dogmatic as i said before it really comes down to in my mind the difference between need and want yeah um because in the end men working is attractive to men and women yeah uh, and men being successful and uh, I, I i really I can't emphasize that enough. And in our modern society, it's completely devalued. And men are just left floundering. And then women are left floundering. Because, you know, we all know what men find attractive about women. But often it's a bit harder to work out exactly what women find attractive about men. But obviously they are attracted to men. Well, one of the things that they're attracted to, not the only thing, is a man's success. Yep. And if a man is not able to be successful, then he just he's not in the running. And he may be able to use his his looks or his charm or or what have you for a short time, but for most women that's not going to be enough to have a a, a marriage because really that's what we want. We want people to get married. Yeah. Because we want stable families. And we want them to last. Yeah. 
So one thing that I've um, said to you in the past and I know I've written about is that you know we're constantly told about independence but if you're independent you failed every person who is independent has failed yes i agree and so we're told about these you know these women